Hi, Liz. How you doing? Good. How are you? Pretty good. Um, I got I got to ask because when I look through your your bio and everything, I see that you've directed a lot of TV, but haven't directed a film since uh, 2015's Careful What You Wish For. With this being on streaming and you know streaming not being as big a thing then, is the rhythm? I'm, I'm sure it's different from film, but is the rhythm different for even a film on streaming than as a director than it was, you know, before? Has it has that changed? Has the rhythm or pacing changed at all? Yeah, I guess everything's just paced up nowadays. You know, I um, the last time I directed a movie, you know even just the pace of like post-production was different and like technologies become so much more efficient that there's um you know less time to marinate and you know there's a lot of demand like you have to turn things around really quickly yeah. um and same with this shooting schedules so my next question if i if i, I don't know look at your imdb and your, and your bio but if i if i walked a mile in your shoes what would i learn about you that that, that that doesn't tell me. That the IMDb doesn't tell you? Yeah. Um, I mean, personally, I I feel like um, I'm really, really shy and I uh, just want to tell stories and, you know, get into like characters' heads and like spread fun and joy. And um, so it's like sort of this odd choice that I've made in professions because I don't like to be in the spotlight and I don't like, you know, that side of it, but it's something that I do because it's, you know, it's, it pays off. And there's like so many great things about like the collaboration and all of the partnerships that you develop. So it's like, I'm kind of one of those like tortured souls in that sense, you know? Yeah. I mean, my family's full of sneaker junkies, but I don't think any of them see kicks the way you do. In fact, will you help me with something? For you, Manhattan, anything. OK. What do these say about me? Uh, and don't go soft on me now, OK? I can take it. They they don't really say anything. I mean, they're not, they're not bad. They're, uh, they're just a uh, little basic, mm. you know, just a, a little more basic than I would assume from King. I'm sorry. So you're saying I'm basic? No, I no no I didn't mean it like that. I, I just mean you know the shoe, you you, you deserve a a one of one. Uh, you, you would. <laughs> now you're right. You should have seen your face. It was so funny. You're right. They are basic, and I was worried about that because I am not basic. <laughs> so if you're worried they weren't fresh. Why'd you cop them? Is that like a Manhattan thing? Y'all do that up there? It's a life thing. Because sometimes you gotta try something out and hope it surprises you. Today, I tried out these kicks and mm -hmm. they didn't. No. No, no not at this all. Time. <laughs> but today I also tried going on an adventure with you. And. Are you surprised? Yeah. And then some. Well, um, also, you know, my daughter is finishing uh, up for her second year at Cornell. Nice. And, and I know that that. Oh wait, Cornell. I'm going to be up there next week. I'll have to look. Is she going to be there next week? Yeah, she'll be there. Okay. Im Imani Finkley. She, you know, she's she's interested, in, very much interested in film. She's oh, wow. going up on a million screeners with me. How how did Cornell help? Um, foster that your your dream i know you went to usc and everything else later but how did cornell yeah. kind of help help you as a director uh chase this dream i had to be honest the biggest thing i learned from cornell was um the work ethic like there's just so many type a people up there <laughs> and um we were all such overachievers and we kind of fed each other and got like excited about movies and you know theater and um and it gave me drive and then I really do have a still a, such a strong community from from the school. You know, I'm going back next week. I'm going to be talking to students there, and like, um, I just I don't know. I have such an affinity for it. But if she has time, she should really take a class with a guy named David Feldshoe, who taught me a lot of like. He's not only a, a, like a Pulitzer Prize winning um, writer, but he's also like an emergency room doctor on the weekends, 
and he ran the Guthrie Theater as a director. Like he just everything, but he almost breaks down like directing into like mathematical terms. It's really interesting, and I've never taken a class quite like his. So if she has time, I would highly recommend it, and uh, tell her I will pull for her to get in if if she's having trouble because it's a small class. So. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm definitely gonna hope. I'll hope y'all connect next week. I will definitely. Send yeah. This yeah. Um, yeah. Will you? I'm, my email's on IMDb, so just contact me. Um, okay. Because I'll be up there for like several days. So, do what? What is the sneaker in your closet? That what is your favorite sneaker in your closet? It doesn't have a story. Um, I guess my favorite sneaker in my closet because I'm a director, so I'm. It's a really physically rigorous job where you're on your feet for over twelve hours a day, and so once I started wearing sneakers every day. It gave me like a lot of power. And there's this particular brand, it's Zadig and Voltaire. It's, they're, they're called the High Flash and I have four versions of them. And they're not very well known, but they have like an inch and a half lift in them. And so A, it's like rubbery and cozy after that many hours, but B, it gives you like extra power because you can kind of like tower over everyone. <laughs> so that's like my secret weapon. Um, and uh, so I love them. And I'm also a sucker for like um, the Nike blazer because, um, you know, those are from the 70s. I really like the shape of, of the body. So, um, yeah, I like a lot of different kinds of sneakers. Thanks for your time and, and, and entertaining us. Can't wait to see a million more TV shows and movies from you. Oh, thank you. Thank you.